Mike, 31 male, fiancé, 34 female, cheated and got pregnant by the other guy. This is a completely fabricated recounting of events. In the almost 10 years since we first met my girlfriend, with whom I've been dating for four years, and I have been engaged to be married. Certainly, we had our high points and low points, as I'm sure everyone has, but it was never as a result of anything illegal or immoral on our side, as far as I know. When my so started a new job around six months ago, I began to notice slash feel slash see more red flags in our relationship, which continued to grow. It brought us both great satisfaction to learn that she would now be able to pursue a profession with her new qualifications, something I had pushed her to do throughout her undergraduate studies prior to her new job as a teacher. She has met some new acquaintances now that she has been working for a few months and has had the opportunity to get to know them better. Therefore, her staying out till 3 o'clock in the morning or being out overnight, she claims she stayed at her sister's place and not returning home until the next day were the first red flags. Because I am a trustworthy person, I made the decision to ignore the information without further examination. According to the information she supplied me at the time, she then travels out of state with her new work colleagues to a beach that is around six hours away, which is approximately six hours away. She went to a bar while on her beach vacation, where she met a man with whom she had contact according to reports. Consider the following scenario. My so returns home after a vacation and informs me the next day that she must leave in order to review our engagement and relationship. Obviously, the fact that I've been going about my business as usual, without seeing anything unusual, at this moment, I'm not aware of any instances of cheating, has taken me by complete surprise. It took all I had to convince her to remain, including a promise to take her to counseling. She refused and left, claiming she was sleeping at her sister's home, which she later confirmed was correct. Her return was finally met with a statement stating that she wanted to work on her issues and that she was prepared to attend couples counseling with her husband and children. She informed me that she was having a kid three weeks prior to this. For the second time, I'm a trusting person, so I believe it to be mine, particularly because my wife and I have been trying to create a family for quite some time. I'm thrilled and immediately begin making baby-related plans, as well as purchasing baby books, corner protectors, and other baby-related products. However, those red flags began to appear in my head, and my thoughts began to swirl around in circles. A paternity test was conducted as a consequence of this, and I told her that I planned to have one performed in order to establish my fatherhood. Because of my personal trepidation as well as the reality that I needed to comply with her request, I responded in the yes, but I also said that I had faith in her judgment. She was irritated by my suggestion, so we agreed to put it on the back burner for the foreseeable future. During a conversation about the baby that we were having at home on Friday, I brought up the issue of the paternity test once again. It was as a consequence of this that she finally broke down and revealed to me about her infidelity to me and how she is certain that her father is the other people. When I inquired about it, she told me that she had arranged an abortion the next week for the next day. To put it bluntly, I was caught completely by surprise and my heart was broken as well. My response was not to worry, I'm still waiting for it to happen but I volunteered to drive her to her abortion appointment since it was about an hour away and I did not want her to become sick or anything else on the way home. Afterwards, she says that when on a beach vacation with her sister, she met this man and the two of them had relations. Then she claims that they met up again, I presume on a future visit to her sister's home, although she disputes this, and they had relations for the second time, what she tells me could be more than twice I'd. Upon further investigation, it was discovered that the father had told her that he did not want anything to do with the kid and that he had urged her to have an abortion. My guess is that receiving this news was tough for her to accept since she had been wishing a child for quite some time. He also advised that she get in touch with me about discussing the issue on her own. Lol, I guess they talked about me. It's likely that I would have ended up in that scenario if I hadn't been talking about paternity testing. Within a few months, I had moved out of our apartment and back into my parents' home. It seems like she is making an effort to convey her love for me, but I feel misled and do not see how anything can be addressed at this point in our relationship. That our life together has been destroyed and that I have lost my companion or dog, despite the fact that I am always at home with it since I WFH, as well as all of the other things that break when a relationship ends, makes me quite depressed. To put it another way, I am seeking for some direction on what I should be doing next. 
Alternatively, I'd want to know if anybody has any thoughts on how I might begin experiencing the impacts of this, since I'm currently feeling lifeless and would appreciate any help. Edit. The comments have been really encouraging, and I appreciate you taking the time to read them. I'm trying to cope with the situation, so thank you for your support. Around 85% of my possessions have been transported. The remainder are in storage and packaged up, so I'll have to schedule some time with the ex-fiancé to look through it all. Nevertheless, after the last trip there is accomplished, I'll be completely relocated to the new location. I was able to get everything of significant value out of there for me. Edit 2. I had to go over and assist her in getting rid of the remaining items since her lease was set to end on December 31, 2021, but she hadn't completely moved out of the house by that time. Initially, I had the idea that there was a lot more work to be done, but fortunately, it wasn't that awful, and it only took me around two hours to move everything out of there and into the bus. After that, I said my goodbyes to her without expressing any emotion and walked away. Since then, I haven't seen or heard from her. That left me with just one thing to worry about, automobile insurance, which I canceled and replaced with a new policy. The reason I contacted her was to inform her that her insurance coverage was about to expire and that she had 10 days to get a new policy, so I gave her plenty of notice. I have no idea what she did with the extra time she was given, and it is not my responsibility to find out. Three years have passed since I contacted her for vehicle insurance on January 3, 2022, and I have not had any more touch with her since that time. She has made no effort to contact me in the last week or so. This is not because I want her to contact me. In fact, I'm relieved that she hasn't sought to contact me through phone or any other means. I got in contact with my landlord, who informed me that I will be getting papers about my early termination fee and how to pay it in the near future. I was relieved. I was overjoyed when I learned of this development. Even though the tenant's portal is available online, my account has been disabled. Therefore, I am unable to view any of the information. However, the landlord did remark that they already had a new tenant lined up, which turned out to be accurate. This is due to the fact that they have not provided me with any information on how this termination fee would be computed. But since I haven't paid anything yet, I'm just sitting here waiting for it to arrive in the mail at some time. I'm wondering whether there's anything specific to COVID that prohibits them from billing me, or if there is some other restriction that I'm not aware of that keeps them from charging me. The invoice is almost likely to arrive, but it would be a pleasant surprise to not be required to pay the $3,000. With that out of the way, things have been going nicely for me. I have not yet suffered any kind of emotional suffering due to this situation. It was as if I hadn't cried a single tear for her or for the termination of our relationship in the previous several months. I feel I have reclaimed my independence. I've been working out at the gym, taking on part-time jobs, and participating in my interests whenever the chance presents itself to me. In addition, I had planned a rock climbing and trekking vacation with one of my closest friends, whom I don't need to see very frequently these days because of our hectic schedules. Decisions are made on my own without the need to contact anybody else or check on our financial situation or make sure that our calendars are organized, which is pretty freeing. The fact that I have unlimited freedom to do anything I want is astonishing to me. Someone commented on this page that I hadn't been sad because my future self knew how wonderful my life would be one day and I believe this to be true more and more every day as time goes on. In my youth, I felt restricted, but I no longer feel that way and I want to experience all that life has to offer at this point in my life. Update. I have completely removed all of my belongings from the flat. I am now entirely residing in my former room in my parents' basement, which is convenient since it is somewhat secluded and has its own private entrance. I've spoken with my parents about going ahead, paying some rent so they can make a profit from my presence, paying for some utilities and food, and helping around the home, such as mowing the lawn and shoveling snow. Overall, my connection with my parents is good. We get along well and don't bother one other's privacy. I could afford my own home, but I don't see the value in paying $1,100 or more for a one-bedroom apartment at this time, especially because I'm going to need some time to recuperate from this scenario. I could pay $1,100 or more for a one-bedroom apartment and then be alone while I heal, or I could save that money and stay with my parents. It's not a bad idea to climb the ladder. I spoke with the landlord, and we decided to end the lease early on December 31. I paid the December rent and will have to pay an additional two months 
rent as an early termination charge. They provide a payment plan to assist stretch it out. I'll have it paid off by the middle of February. As far as I know, my ex is still residing in the old apartment. I had to go over to grab some mail, and she still hasn't begun packing, which bothers me. I'm hoping it doesn't result in eviction, since it would certainly go against my record as well, because on the lease, I haven't looked into it too much, but if I can establish that it wasn't me that was evicted, I may be able to get it removed. Now that I'm a few weeks out, I've been reflecting on the weeks and months leading up to this revelation. I assume the guy with whom she had an affair resides nearby, if not in the same city. My ex prints out her work schedule, and on the day she was meant to be at the beach with her two co-workers, they were both scheduled to work. When I questioned X about it at the time, she claimed they talked with management and they weren't on the calendar anymore, so I asked why the schedule hadn't been changed, and she said it was at work, but she didn't have a copy of it. Another red flag has been raised. At the time, I had a gut feeling that this didn't add up, especially when three individuals being off on the same Thursday and Friday does not seem to be permitted in such a tiny business, as they only have like seven or eight people total. I should have looked into it more, but I let it go. I have a feeling in my gut that this affair partner is nearby and not in another state. When she became pregnant, he stated he'd travel up here to have with her. That's a six-hour trip. So he traveled six hours to get here, had, and then drove six hours back the following day. I have my doubts. I mean, I understand desperation, but that's crazy. Plus, he just recently had her, so it's not like he hasn't had any for years. I'm not sure. It doesn't make sense to me, like much of this predicament.